Awesome. Hi, everyone. I'm Cam McCroden. Uh, for those of you I haven't met yet, I practice here in Victoria and in Nanaimo. And uh, I'm here today because I wanted to actually bring a few of the opinions of a good friend of mine and somebody who's been doing a lot of remote vision therapy stuff in the past and integrating that back into their office. And I wanted to bring some of his knowledge to you. So with that, I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Paul Roulette. He runs one of the highest regarded vision therapy clinics in BC. And he has more remote things for locations and stuff like that going on than I can probably do justice in the intro. Um, so Paul, uh, great to see you today. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's good to chat with you as always. I appreciate the kind words in the introduction. So yeah, we you referenced remote, um, remote remote vision therapy and connection. So we've been doing that for, for a while now. And if there's anything in general you'd, you'd like to ask about, I'm happy to share. Uh, absolutely, actually. So, so for some of the people who are going to be watching this too, as you went into the remote um, vision therapy, and, and I know I think you've actually been running a, a group online as well of, of collecting information for people too, like to, right. to get some of this out there. Is that, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, we've um, we had a little bit of a sort of a group on on base camp where people were sharing ideas. And I think with COVID, we've seen a really big transition in terms of the necessity for this style of technology. I've said before, I, I suspect that this type of care is going to become more and more common with time. This was just a, a bit of an incubation period where everyone was kind of forced to uh, learn and share and grow very, very quickly. So some of the things that we've been talking about, I think will be helpful for years to come and maybe giving us a glimpse of how we'll be offering these services uh, over the next decade or and, so. And, and Paul, so do you have like, do you have a couple of quick tips that you've learned sort of like the most high impact couple of things that you could give some of the people watching this right now, some of the ODs out there? Yeah, I think, I think the, the big three or four things that have been helpful for us. Um, initially, you know, there's forms of connectivity with patients, which I think is valuable. Um, and so there's a variety of different software that, that can be used for that. What I would say is at least as valuable is, um, and I've written about this a little bit on, on our blog and then also um, in COVD's uh, vision development and, and uh, rehab edition, um, talked about how to connect with uh, and educate your team. I think that that becomes one of the biggest challenges when you're operating remotely. We have one central headquarters and then a number of different satellite clinics, but a lot of the information and administration and conversations run through our organizational hubs. So some form of software where you can connect internally with your team becomes extremely valuable, assign tasks, um, set to do's, organize equipment, I find that that tends to be helpful and just maintains morale and um, ensures that everyone's on the same page moving forward. So we use Basecamp. There's a number of different software uh, options that are available, um, Slack, Microsoft Teams, something of that, uh, you know, nature is, is, is extremely valuable. Uh, when you're organizing kind of in, along the same thread of organization, one of the things that we've really accelerated um, and moved forward with is, um, how we how we create kits or how we prepare patients for the experience. So we've always we've always managed patients via a kit based care where they get a certain amount of gear uh, kind of on on session one. But this has really allowed us to to organize exactly what we give people um, and create a cost efficient set of gear and equipment for people to use. And I we've noticed now that we're back in office. Uh, we become even more efficient with um, setting that expectation on, on the first session. So for online or remote care, I just find knowing exactly what your patients have on the other end of the call uh, creates confidence in, in your approach. And so setting out tools um, and being consistent with that, I think, is a, is, uh, is a really important element to add. And then probably the third one is how you assign activities or um, how you ensure that there's consistency with the activities that you're providing. So 
Um, you know, I, I found that you, like Ted, you found that to be an issue before. I know in my practice trying to do yeah. things remotely for people, I often shied away from it because you've got the person trying to hold their phone. The therapist is trying to right. see what's going on. You know, they often right. end up with, you know, not doing the activity correctly by the time you see them back in office. Exactly. And, and, and just having sort of a consistent hub where you know that people are being provided with the activities in the way that you intend for them to be performed in particular, gross motor or motion activities, they're, they're trickier to communicate when you're just talking to someone remotely. So um, having, having video content or the ability to send activities with written instructions as well as video content, uh, that's probably the third thing that I would find is valuable. So how you connect with and organize your team. So having some level of software that does that is extremely helpful. Um, creating kits or consistent kits so that you can uh, organize the experience. That's helpful for remote. We found that that's translated a lot even now that we're back in office. And then having software you can assign videos and be consistent and just know that even if maybe there's a little bit of lack of understanding during the session, they've got a video to turn to. I, I find those three are really helpful and, and they, they help with motivation. Will you, have you released sort of like your stack of the software and tools you use? Like, is that on your blog or is it within your Basecamp group? Like sort of like, here's like the sort of the Paul Roulette learnings of, of, you know, this is what we found to work best. So people don't have to reinvent the wheel. Well, yeah, we have. So um, it's, it's all, it's all detailed in a couple areas on our blog. We have, and, and what is your blog? What, what is your blog site? Sorry to. Um, OkanaganVisionTherapy.ca yeah. slash Easy. blog. Um, okay. And uh, so the, the one of the more recent ones where we did a post on, on tools for online vision therapy. And we also have a rec recent post on um, vision development and rehabilitation, that special edition that we referenced that came out through COVD. So you can link, we've got, we've written an article in there. Uh, obviously, you know, you helped out you and I, you know, work together on, on creating you're, that. You're and... usually the first person I turn to for stuff like this. <laughs> and, and actually on that note, I have to thank you. Um, because in, in talking about how important that video content is, you know, when we were looking at doing it, I know our office donated a bunch of video stuff um, for and, and put it out there uh, in order to help through COVID on the on the neurovisual trainer app. Um, but I got to thank you too, because, you know, it was funny, I called you about that. And it was just immediately, a, you know, if this is going to help some of the people, because I think you're already kind of sort of semi coaching your base camp group at the time, right, too. So yeah, and, and um, that's, that's sort of, yeah, we, we had originally done it through, we were kind of trying to organize things through base camp and through conversations and connecting, and we just wanted to put everything together. So a list of all of our kits, all of our software, how we connect with, it's all written and, and organized in uh, on our blog and then also in um, COVD's uh, journal article there. So if people are looking for the specifics, you know, we've got the list of the 20 items that, that we, we use Perfect. and then also the software uh, that we found found valuable as well. And, and speaking of softwares, you know, uh, like for example, our, our office runs heavily on Teams, just Microsoft right. based for a lot of stuff. And I know your, your Basecamp, for example, too, which I actually like because of the Google integrations, but that's a whole other right. thing. <laughs> um, you know, uh, one of the things I wanted to ask is, is has your, you know, now that you're back in the office, have your software programs changed kind of due to some of the COVID experience? You know, are there things that you do differently now, be it with Teams or, or other software that, you know, than you did before? Yeah, well, I, we're definitely, we lean um, as far as sort of our main organizational experience as it comes to connecting with, with patients or clients. Uh, we, we have been using NeuroVisual Trainer uh, for the vast majority of things that we're, and, and again, COVID really accelerated this, you know, obviously your, your team had added uh, videos to the software. We contributed, you know, about 75 of our videos. And as a result of that, I, I think our, our whole team has really taken to using this program. Um, it's been very user-friendly. It works on a variety of different Oh, it's, it's had its bugs and stuff as anything, yeah. though. but I mean, it's, you know, I think it's the amazing feedback from teams like yours that at least helps keep propelling things and, and growing yeah, and developing. They, they've been super helpful, uh, you know, over there at just responding to uh, feedback that we've had. We've also really liked being able to assign videos as well as exercises and interactive activities. So we're not 
cycling between as many different forms of software. So, oh, okay. us, so, so beforehand, were you using multiple kind of yeah. forms to, yeah. Yeah. You would kind of, you'd almost, it would, it would result in a little bit of overwhelm in the sense that we'd be providing a bunch of different uh, forms of software. And the tricky thing was it would almost, it would take a certain amount of time for people to orient to the software. And so they, they weren't, they weren't doing as much of their free space activities as we would want. So being able to send the activities and the videos, again, super helpful during COVID, but we've, we've extended to using that now um, almost exclusively with, with our in-office experience. So uh, I, I think for, for us, that's been a really great tool and we've continued to use it and, and uh, We'll continue to use it. And so. kind of kind of one last question to wrap up on this. So, so and, and I guess what I'm hearing there is, is the platform has been helpful for you both with remote therapy and then now even more so in office therapy right. too. Right. I know one of the things that's come up a lot with the remote vision therapy, and it was, it was funny for me, I was actually incredibly resistant to the idea in the beginning sometimes of remote or computer-based stuff because of this piece around, well, you know, are people just going to get this computer program with no human interaction? And it's like literally just do all of these things. Um, right. how, how important do you still see the, the, the therapist piece within there, be it remote or in clinic? You know, I think sometimes in the technology world, everyone's looking for shortcuts. You know, I don't think there's any shortage of people out there right now trying to invent the like, you know, here, you don't need to know vision therapy, but here's the thing to give your patients and it'll do it all for them. Um, right. You know, how, how paramount do you see the therapist feedback and, and role within that, you know, be it remote or in office? I, you know, I think that, I think as, as um, I think humans were naturally wired for that, um, for the elements of motivation and coaching and sort of that in person, whether it's remote in person experience or in office experience. And I haven't found anything that really even comes close to the value that you get from having that one-on-one -on -one interaction or the, the touch points, you know, you will sometimes see that data will improve, but people aren't necessarily sure why it's improving or how to integrate it into their day-to-day -day lives. So the thing about just, you know, just creating activities for people is you might get a nice experience for 15 or 20 minutes. There's just not the translational value into real life. So, I would say that, you, you know, the tools have been really uh, helpful for maybe accelerating the, the process. I can't imagine a scenario where the, the therapist interaction, however, could be circumvented. It just, I, it just wouldn't get the same results. So. I, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly, actually. I think you nailed it. Um, you know, I'd say one of the fundamentals is the therapist or the OD, like who, whomever is doing it, basically the vision therapist, and, and, you know, I, I look at it coming from a sports background, kind of like a sport, you know, often the observer can see things in such a way that they can kind of help to skillfully guide the person to learn a new way to do it. Um, right. I say the downside sometimes if, if, it, if it's entirely computer based with no, no human within that is, you know, you fear the loss of, of who's going to help them, who's going to be able to understand how to guide them to, so they can figure out the new way of doing it you know, as opposed to just doing the activity over and over the same way or finding ways to get better at it that are really just workarounds, um, right. you know, not developing it. So, yeah. you know, it's, 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 I'm glad to hear you say that. And that's always been my gut feeling. So, um, yeah. you know, the therapy piece is huge. So, so just one more time for everyone. What's, what's your blog again? Um, OkanaganVisionTherapy.ca um, forward slash blog. And then over the last handful of months, if you look at our last four or five blog posts, we've outlined tools for online therapy. And then again, also, I think within those are a lot of, as we've discussed, a lot of pearls that we still continue to use. So it's definitely some of the things that we've trialed and we've trialed a lot of things over the last number of years. We've tried to distill it down and helpful for remote at least as helpful for in office. And, too, and well. I think at one point you did a video showing how your team's using neurovisual trainer as well. Yeah, we, that there was, um, you know, kind of wanted to show how we were orienting to it. And then we were doing uh, some remote progress checks as well, using a lot of the interactive activities, which was kind of a, a hidden blessing within the program. I don't think it was designed specifically for that, but we, we were really able to get some great results. Um, you know, the, a lot of good 
good client feedback from our remote progress checks. So that worked really well um, in order, you know, in order to keep people motivated and engaged and things of that nature. I, well, I think hopefully, and I mean, we've got to wrap this up in a few seconds here, but I think hopefully, you know, if, if you were able to kind of, you know, now that we're X amount of time into this and back in the office and stuff, you know, I, I can probably speak for the group of everyone, you know, I'd love to be able to see a video of kind of like, you know, a bit of the update. It's like the long term yeah. kind of review and, and even with the things you've learned since then, is, is that on the plate? Are you going to do anything like that soon? Yeah, it's, um, there's going to be more content in terms of how we're evolving and, and how we're managing having different centers and how we're using different software. And just to, um, you know, again, we don't pretend to be the, the be all and end all experts on, on this sort of stuff. Uh, but I know we've, we've trialed a lot of things. We've, made a lot of mistakes that have made us stronger so i kind of like to you know sequentially give distilled versions of hey this is this is what's been working we've tried a lot of things and so yeah we'll definitely be and putting more content out. you know I, I have to say i have so much respect for that too because i mean you're obviously doing a great job you're humble about it but then i mean you're putting information out there in a way that actually helps to leap things forward even more you know, instead of being like, it's like, yes, this isn't the be all end all, but here's where I am right now. Hopefully other of you can kind of, you know, join and, you know, improve and figure out stuff and whatever, instead right. of kind of, you know, being closed off. So anyways. Well, and that's, yeah, that's just one last point. I think that I would definitely make a call for even more collaboration in the sense that uh, if there's people out there who've, who've, uh, who found tools, you know, strategies and things that are helpful, just the more we share with the community, I think the I think the better and stronger it becomes for for patients. So I couldn't agree more. Well, thank you very much, Paul. Uh, enjoy your wonderful Saturday afternoon. I hope you get some Will sunshine do. too once you're done. <laughs> Will do. And uh, have a great day. Yeah, you too. Okay, Take cheers. Care, Cam. Cheers.